Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll direct your attention to the front of the cabin, your flight attendant will show you how to buckle your fucking seatbelt. We still need that goddamn speech again. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Episodes of the Blowhole. With me, Tyler. Over there is Mark. And in the rear of the cabin, um, uh, I'm Tim. What's up, guys? Man, I'm still figuring out how to put this oxygen mask on my my face. Oh, my God. Well, okay. Look, just because the bag is not inflated does not mean that oxygen is not flowing. Right. You know, all that does, all that shit does is for people who haven't flown, which I I feel like it blows my mind every time I do fly. There's tons of them. I I know. know That's what I was going to say. It blows my mind every time I fly and I hear someone somewhere go, this is my first time on a plane. But like, (laughs) you know. At this point, though, have you not seen a movie? Have you not seen fifteen fucking movies where they do that whole thing? At the for Christ's sake, they do it in Home Alone. Everyone's seen Home Alone, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah. the, the, I mean, the, whenever they do that, at that point, all you are doing is putting the potential the potential fear of death in people who have never flown. You don't need that oxygen mask. Yeah, all if gonna, the plane is going down, you're it's fucking too late. dying. All you're gonna yeah, do, yeah. Way too late. you're gonna die well oxygenated. Yeah, that's it. And you're a nurse. What does the oxygen do for you? Well, Brad Pitt in Fight Club Explained would say very well. that oxygen gets you high, that's but right. that's not even true. Because if it was true, I'd be high as shit right now. Mm-mm. No, I have uh, 21% oxygen in the natural atmosphere. Yeah, which is pretty low, actually. Yeah, it's mostly nitrogen in the atmosphere. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't, oxygen doesn't Turns get out. you high. It just gets you oxygenated. And uh, I think if you don't know how to put the oxygen mask on, just look around you at all the other people that are doing it and copy them. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know how to put that stupid-looking mask on, you've never put a mask on, and we should probably call it a night for you. <laughs> Uh, Which band goes look. over my head? Yeah, let's just let's just call it. If you're wearing yeah. it on the top of your head, you probably don't really need to live on, anyways. Uh huh. You know? They're like, make sure your mask is fully secured before you help your neighbor. And I want to be in that position where I get my mask on. Well, I don't want to be in that position really ever. But if I am, yeah. I'm just gonna put my mask on and then grab theirs and then double up one over the <laughs> nose, one over the mouth. Be like, yeah. Fuck you, we're going down. Yeah. Like. Uh, I'm gonna test this tell theory. To, Can I get high before I go? Before <laughs> tell I tell them down to here. put their head between their legs. It's it's actually safer that way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I told uh, I I told Lauren um, just the other week we were talking about going over to Europe for a vacation or something, and I, you know, as as much as I have progressed. I don't think that I've really discussed my anxiety issues on the podcast, but mm. as much as I progress to overcome my anxiety issues and I feel like they're kind of in the past for me, uh, I don't know that I could do a 14 hour trip. I do have mild claustrophobia and I feel like that would start setting in. And then also with the thought of flying over the ocean, I told her, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to have to just take a handful of some sort of Zan- Xanax or what you Ativan know, the Ativan, whatever La- it is, lavender. I'm gonna, the yeah, trick. just oh. huff some lavender. Yeah, you were t- please for everyone who's listening, tell us that that gem of a story that you were talking about earlier. Uh, yeah, so um, we got back in town uh, a couple nights ago, and uh, we we're hungry, and we didn't have any groceries at the house because we'd been gone for so long. So we we're like, let's go get some sushi, and so we we're gonna go eat at the place by Tim's house, and so we met him for sushi. And then uh, we were on the way back to the house, and uh, the People's Pharmacy was on from NPR, and this lady the was... The People's Pharmacy. Yeah, the People's Pharmacy, yeah. which occasionally has pretty decent health advice. And it's like NPR ripping off John Tesh. That motherfucker's been doing yeah. it for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and these guys, this they had this expert lady, this lady who, who I, some sort of doctor they indicated, but yeah, she was talking about um, aromatherapy and... And mm. taking lavender, how you can mm. you can um, take it orally, you can you know burn it or mm-hmm. have it in uh, some kind of oil lamp or something. Mix it with some peppermint oil. So you can uh, apply it topically. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's good for basically everything that ails you. And she indicated that you could, in fact, OD on it. You oh, have boy. to <laughs> have to watch your dosage on Whoa. the oh, lavender man. essential oils. Bro, and, 
I got you know, so fucked up on lavender last week. <laughs> me as a crazy. skeptic and Amber as a nurse, we're losing our shit, like <laughs> screaming at the radio. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll be honest with you. I can attest to it. Anecdotally, I OD'd on lavender, and that's why uh-huh. I wear so much turquoise now. <laughs> oh, It yeah. balances it, out it, your chakras. It, yeah, wards exactly. It, wards off the uh, effects. You know, very thick hemp necklaces. That makes that sense. I, yeah. We, we've yeah. totally just like cruised over this. Tyler is back after an extended break. Oh, yeah, that's right. And Nick is now gone. Thank you. Yeah. He's on a gay little cruise and diving expedition. Yeah. I don't know. Some sort of... Something about eating dolphin sausage. Eat, whatever that means. Him, him and Woodrow have set sail in a catamaran. <laughs> <laughs> or however he does it. Yeah. But uh, welcome back, Tyler. We're glad you're back. We needed yeah. your walk on the wild side, but all we had was a... What was it? Jo- walking through a Jogging inner city. through the inner city with Nick. Yep. Yeah. It, was, it was very Nick. Nick's it was very Nick. Yeah, yeah. Nick's we, oh, bits. we definitely caught up on the... On the yeah. While we were What'd, you What'd you think? What'd you think? Well, I felt it like a, a certain for the something. First... <laughs> <laughs> uh, interesting. I thought we did good. Uh, I was waiting know, for Tyler <laughs> to be like, as a fan, this podcast sucks. Yeah. It's not. I the anything. intro music was cool. I've never heard that before. <laughs> Tyler's like, hard to listen to. <laughs> Very difficult. <laughs> Mediocre were, at were, best. Were there really. any parts where you're wanting to chime in, but you're like, oh shit, wait. I'm listening to it. I'm not oh, actually. Well, there. basically, every time that you guys brought up, you're like, this is the point where Tyler would say, Actually, I was in the car going, actually, I was like, I was raising my finger and you guys were like, this is where Tyler would tell us what it actually is. And I was like, I, yeah, yeah, that's probably. Yeah, this is it's just, uh, it's kind of interesting. It's the first time we've had uh, anybody absent from the podcast. Yeah. Or no, Nick was absent a little bit, but no one really noticed. So it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It was when Nick was still getting his bearings. He hadn't developed his characters. You, you know, did your voice. Kind of got his radio voice. And, yeah. yeah. No one His really radio him. voice. Uh, check, check. And I've got one, a radio two. face. Yeah. Face well, we all do. Yeah. None yeah. of us are very handsome, let's face it. Uh, speak for yourself. <laughs> well, you don't... Yeah, please uh, do. You know, bags under your eyes like these attract a certain, <laughs> they, certain female. They, those bags, all they do they, is hold people's yeah, attention. They attract... Je ne sais quoi. They yeah. attracted one person, at least. That's now, all, you need, that down all you need, All you need. All you need. Well... What, yeah. Uh, yeah, so tell us about your trip, man. You were gone for, what, two, almost two weeks, and we don't yeah. know a thing about it. Uh, well, we flew to Salt Lake City, um, uh, my lovely wife Amber and I, and um, we flew into town um, and drove to, or rented a car, then drove to REI, and they r- will rent you camping equipment. Yeah. And then so we drove down to Zion National Park and camped there. Uh, and then actually we stayed in a lodge a couple nights too. And Those then goddamn Mormons just naming everything. So after. far it sounds like all you did was sleep yeah, places. I know. You just slept on. In well, the we dirt. drove like motherfuckers. You drove and slept. Yeah. Well, we we hiked a little bit. We saw some oh. stuff. Yeah. To your um, next place to sleep. Mm-hmm. Any, yeah. Pretty much. Any wild Mormons just roaming and praying? No. For, foraging. No. Yeah. Uh, there was this lady in the. So we got to. We stayed in the hotel in Salt Lake City and. Uh, we went to, we we're starving because we've been traveling all day and, you know, needed a goddamn drink. And so we walk into this bar and, in the hotel and this lady's pulled up, had a glass of wine and a salad there. We walked into a bar called the Golden Tablet. <laughs> <laughs> That's she, a great uh, name for yeah, a bar. Right? That's a great <laughs> name for a bar. Um, I know our next venture, if this uh, <laughs> doesn't pan out. <laughs> this lady is a, works in the, uh, uh, hospitality industry by trade, and they were having a convention. Okay. I was just about to say a whorehouse. No, she's Is probably not pulling in a whole lot of money if that's her gig. But um, or she might have some interesting talents. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But um, mm-hmm. she says she says she goes <laughs> she goes. Are you guys? Are you guys? From you're not from here, right? And we're like, yeah, we're from Arkansas. <laughs> you are not of this earth. And she said, she said, so you're not Mormon. And we're like, yeah, no, we're not Mormon. She's like, all right, well, what's the deal with these people? Because they are <laughs> weird, huh? And like, starts talking so wow. loud in the bar in Salt Lake in City. In the Golden yeah. Tablet? Inside in the, the Golden Tablet about how weird Mormons are. It was a bar full of Mormons, and yeah. she was just trying to <laughs> and we're finally. Like, and we're like, to be fair... They're not supposed to drink. So I was going to say, what's their relationship be? with alcohol? Surely it's like you can't really talk shit. I mean, you can talk as much shit as you want because they're not going to be like, hey, I'm a Mormon. Give me another round. I don't even yeah. think they can drink caffeine. Oh, no, they're shit. not. They can't. Yeah. Uh, Pentecostals can't. They either. do ephedrine. 
Instead. Pentecostals yeah. are what? Yeah, that's, Mor- that's how they get jacked up. Mormons can do as much smack as they want, but no caffeine. No, it comes. There's there's a plant that grows in the desert, and I actually saw it. Um, it's called Mormon tea, and it has ephedra in it, and they Jesus. derive ephedrine they're, from it. And they're on where, greenies. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah, God. they're all jacked up on two-way pills. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, baseball, they used to do a bunch of amphetamines in the major leagues, like, throughout its whole history. Yeah. And I guess people didn't really know that for a long time, but I have a feeling that's the only reason anybody would play baseball. That's Listen, the only time I hit a home run. It's a lot of I was standing jacked up around. two-way pills. <laughs> you, might, you might play, like... In a baseball game, and never touch the ball the whole game. If you're like right field or Look, something, I got. I, I I think we may have hashed this out before, but honestly, baseball is so goddamn boring. Yeah, I wish that they would just legalize steroids. Let them play juiced up. I think that home would runs, be the only way. If it, it was, if every batter hit a home run, it'd be even more boring. Though. No, man, no, because then a lot of people would start migrating to the outfield. You'd be wanting to catch a home run ball. It'd Maybe be a fun thing. Move the uh, move the fence back a few hundred feet or but something. You're you're kind of missing it though, because it yeah, you'd have to move the fence back because not only are guys going to be hitting home runs left and right, pitchers are going to be throwing. 115 mile an hour fastballs. Well, you know, I've, oh, right. I've Good heard, point. I uh-huh. heard recently that uh, this year, like the strikeout numbers are so high that the games are just super boring. It's all pitchers duels. Now it's either that or they're hitting a bunch of home runs. So it's either a strikeout or yeah. a home run. I, and yeah. I believe that to it. Me sounds like a dull affair. It's not. The whole thing is a dull affair. It's always been a dull affair. When yeah. people, that's why people only watch the playoffs, and even then, I feel, I'm pretty yeah. sure ratings have gone down year over year for that shit. Thank God we are like an hour away from the NFL season starting, and like three weeks away from NHL. It's, yeah. I, oh, baseball. Well, yeah, I can't wait to watch more sports on television. Hell yeah! Ooh. America's favorite pastime <laughs> can suck my butt. Tyler acts like he doesn't like sports, but he's way into the worst spectator sport, cycling. Have you ever watched cycling on oh, TV? Oh, it's awful. Oh, my God. No, I I, I don't watch cycling on TV. It's no, terrible. Yeah, I can't do it. You know what I did get into, and I still will watch I'm not into cycling this. the sport. I know. Though, you're into cycling, but you don't actually watch the sport. Of course not. How yeah. could you watch that? Yeah. yeah. Well, the, I feel the same Plus way Plus, they're all golf. on drugs, which I think they should be. Yeah. Yes, just like the baseball players. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know what I will watch, and I'll probably catch shit for this, but if I, it's ever on... If, actually, thank God we don't have ESPN anymore. Um, or ESPN like four or whatever. Um, I will watch some World Series of Poker. I'll watch that it's, shit. It's man. interesting oh, enough, man. Cause really? I love, yes, because oh, I wow. love watching people take a bad beat. I love seeing it yeah. coming because you you it's know like, what's in his hand. Yeah, it's you like, know he shouldn't do that. You're in on the secret, man. Yeah, that's you know true. It's, you see it coming down the pipe, and this guy just keeps re raising. It's like, oh man, you're like, Don't I cannot do that. wait to see this. He reaction. has four aces. He yeah. has four aces. Yeah. Don't do it. It's a uh, it's one of those things. I believe the Germans call it Schunenfreude. Where you shot in front. Yeah, where you uh you I gather it, joy from other people's misery. Yeah, and that's Schadenfreude. Yeah, that's all the World Series of Poker is for me. I don't okay. care about who wins. Whenever the guy's standing behind a whole bunch of money, then I get jealous. So, and he would have Schadenfreude for me because I'm like, yeah, motherfucker, just got all that cash. Right. And I'm sitting here doing nothing. <laughs> you know? That's one Good of those point. games where I don't know if this is a thing or not, but do they have a woman and men's division? Because it seems like the type for of poker? game. poker? Yeah. No. Okay, I was, that was my question. I didn't know. It seemed like the type of game where both sex, that and bowling, both sexes could be just as good. Do they have a oh. women's bowling? Is diff- I mean, right? Yeah, it they should. Them, they split them up. They it split should, bowling. Yeah, if you're, really if you're a me? bowler, you're a bowler. If, mm-hmm. should, yeah, if no. you know how to curve the ball into the pocket, yeah, it's technique more than yeah. it is power. Power no. doesn't matter. Yeah, well, it it matters a well, certain a little bit. bit. Maybe Dude, picking up a hard. Think split, about it this way, though. When you look at bowlers, those guys they're they're, they're not jacked. No, they look like they no. look like us, man. And so it's very possible that a woman could gain enough strength to throw a seventeen pound bowling ball down the lane. Yeah. I don't know why you should switch. There's no reason to divide bowling yeah, into men's Mark, and women's. But Mark, to throw that ball ten times. Uh, no, thank you, Tim. Do you know we live in 2018? Equality across the board. Women are biologically the same as men. You didn't know this? They're, they're, I don't even believe women and men are a thing, Mark. Okay. How dare you? Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have crossed a line. Yeah. Why are we even saying woman and man? Yeah, it's people. People. We're an inclusive podcast. That's right. 
Hey, uh, it should I, be the People's Bowling Association. We could, oh, we could just call everyone pod <laughs> the PBA. People. You wouldn't have to change exactly. The yeah, They're, everyone's a pod person. Okay. Yeah. yeah, my pod just happens to be a hell of a lot bigger than yours. If you know what I mean. <laughs> hey, and we're just going to interrupt this right now and say, if you are a pod person, tell someone else about this podcast. We appreciate you guys. Thanks. Yeah. We're just going to interrupt, like interject okay. the promos. Pod that man, way, they can't really skip around. The people who listen to this, they can skip the beginning of the promos. We don't do any at the end. But if it's in the middle of the podcast and you're just catching up and enjoying the hot bowling talk that we got going (laughs) on right now, tell your friends about Episodics of the Blowhole. Let me tell you about something. I don't mind watching bowling on TV. I used to watch it. It came on every Saturday morning after the cartoons. It used to come on. You watch the PBA, those old guys with the weird wrist thing. Oh, yeah. And the shirt with fire on it. Yeah. You know, the little flames and... Those guys had some flair, some showmanship. And I mean, I they re- they spawned an actual like style of fashion or whatever. I mean, do you remember those silk the, button down shirts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Charlie Sheen still that. wears them. Yeah, he does, doesn't he? That guy hasn't That's given up style, on it. Man. Yeah, he even I think he even wrote into the contract for that two and half men he's like uh if i if i get to wear a bowling shirt every episode, i'm not sitting in yeah. wardrobe and they, for and then, three hours yeah, and then they made jokes about shirt. it in yeah. the in the show so it's like he actually gave them material to make fun of them yeah make fun of him by wearing something that he just normally wore yeah he Perfect. just in he just like fully <laughs> embraced blue collar stale smoke grease culture yeah like that's what it is you haven't really heard much about charlie sheen in several he's not doing a couple well. of years is he not i don't know Mm-mm. i just don't keep up with it man i loved it when he said that he had found a uh a cure or whatever for, well he didn't say that he had found a cure for aids but bill maher got duped big time into bringing charlie sheen's doctor at the time oh, and i'll say yeah. that in air quotes doctor because this guy was a total kook he was like the Goes lavender a- lady very similar no i i swear to god this is this what happened he goes he goes on real time and Bill Maher does a one-on-one at the beginning before he brings out the panel, sits down with this guy who's got weird hair, weird accent, and he talks about how he's treating Charlie Sheen with the milk of arthritic goats. <laughs> I swear to God. Well, wasn't he going on about tiger's blood and stuff, too? Well, that was before. Okay. That was the, he was, that was winning. was actually Charlie yeah. Sheen. Charlie Sheen was winning. Arthritic goat milk? No, his doctor at the time was saying that he was treating his AIDS or well, he doesn't have AIDS. He was treating his HIV. He does have AIDS. A- oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got helpers. I mean, yeah, you know, all over. He okay. was banging them all too. Yeah, that's how he got the AIDS or think, HIV. Denise, do you think? Do you think Denise Richards has it? Because I think I, I might wondered, still bang her. I wondered all you would about still her. even knowing that going in. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna get prophylactic treatment and go in and yeah. uh, do my thing. Yeah. Well, I'll wrap it up. Obviously. She wouldn't even have to know. Like, I'm pretty sure you could just take some cellophane and a heat gun and it would conform to your dick, you know? (laughs) I don't. You'd have to get it at maximum mass first, though. Yeah. Oh, would you? Yeah, because you wouldn't want to shrink wrap it small and then it gets big and rips through the cellophane. Nah, you could use like maybe like some neoprene or something. Oh, okay. Or rubber. Yeah. Why not? Just, I could just use a regular condom. He, I don't know why we're you know, inventing new condoms. Why, why because it's 2018 and I'm ingenuitive, all right? Okay, and got, I got a heat gun that I've been dying to use in my I, garage. I need a copyright, I'm not going to let you use your heat gun on my wiener. <laughs> I need a copyright, Laura, because I just thought about something that needs to happen. Okay, there I, is I that, know a guy. There is that space. <laughs> Go. There's that space down beneath where the condom rolls down that stuff can get up in it. Oh, the yeah. The condom needs to go all the way around your balls and around your waist. Yours? Almost like you put on underpants that have a condom hole in it. Oh yeah. Yours, so that way your you condom doesn't go around your balls. You put it around your balls already. <laughs> that's kind of. That's more, why. That's why he gets magnets. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if you just put on a pair of underwear that had the spot for your penis, hard erect penis yeah. that was made out of latex, mm-hmm. that would be the most protective sort of condom you could that's wear. True. Oh yeah. But man, that's you would a good get idea. Hot. Your butthole would be so sweaty. <laughs> well, don't worry about your butthole. <laughs> You could put some sort yeah, of ventilation. Yeah, let her back worry there. about your butthole. It could even be open in the back, people. almost like a like a jock. Uh huh. You know? gotcha. But just it's got to be completely c- yeah. encompassing the whole entirety of the boner and where it connects to the main pelvis mm-hmm. area, and then your scrotum and maybe even the anus. I don't know. Yeah, I just think, an idea. I think kind of like a full on cock girl. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I just figured this out. I just okay. I'm gonna, let me glom onto your idea here. Sure. It, yes, it goes. It covers the anus, but it actually yeah. goes up inside the anus 
So uh-huh. you're protected from insertion. <laughs> oh, no, no. As well as... Okay, I like where you're going with this. Oh, let thank me, you. Let me, to use your term, glom onto your idea. Yeah. So the condom, right? Yeah. It doesn't have to go around your waist, but it does have to cover the balls so you don't get like, you know, that uh, that film. I yeah. know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. the film. It's called... Uh, uh, <laughs> Cheese? No. Trichomonas. Yeah, okay. All I right. mean, if you're needing a condom, no, it's, it's called San, It's called okay. Santorum. San, oh, yeah. <laughs> Santorum. <laughs> After our dear politician, yeah. Rick Santorum. So it, it, that piece stretches, does go into your anus, but mm-hmm. at the end of it is a butt plug. So you get a little pleasure out of it. Okay. Right? Oh, yeah. Stimulate the prostate. Exactly. So maybe you just buy these condoms and they stretch over your balls. A long strip comes out, has a loop on it. You have your own butt plug. You just... Hook it on that butt. Hook so, it in. Oh, yeah, it's a great little idea. Yeah, um, <laughs> I've a long time ago. I've heard tell of something called a female condom. I've yeah. never seen anybody offer up to use it. Which okay, that's when, when, that was my idea for the butt thing. Right, it's, it's basically a but female condom. When girl, in okay, girls are always like, uh, "Are you gonna wear a condom?" And it's like, "Are you gonna wear a condom?" Why yeah, is this my you, job? Yeah, you're the you one skank. that's yeah, no. you're the one that might get pregnant if there's no condom. So why don't you put the condom in? The female condom. Wherever You're you, already wh- over here. Wherever you see you what those. I look like. Do I look like yeah. the type of guy right. that would wear one? I had a hard time finding my other flip-flop uh. a minute ago. <laughs> I think I know where a condom is. We, yeah. In this society, we're not supposed to judge people on their looks, but, uh, I mean, you knew what you were getting when yeah. I was talking <laughs> to you in this smoky bar earlier. <laughs> and also, uh, you can inspect my penis first. Yeah. Uh, I can't inspect the inside of your vagina, so I think no. the onus is on you. Hello, hello, hello. to protect that inside of your vagina. <laughs> oh, you definitely could inspect it. But. Well, yeah, you need a speculum and a headlamp, and I don't know headlamp, whatever else you need for that. I mean, you could take a look. You never know. You might run into a girl that's like put your dick in her, and it's like ringing a dinner triangle or something like that. You know, <laughs> just go, like, you know, plenty of room best. to move around. <laughs> that's saying would, that's a good thing, right? Yeah, when I was real young <laughs> and uh, first learning about the ways of a man and a woman together, mm-hmm. uh, I oh. truly thought that loose was like what you wanted. You yeah. know, I didn't even know what it meant. Oh, I just yeah. like, oh, it's something yeah, tight. Yeah, man, like, you can get in there without any trouble at all. Exactly. <laughs> I was just, well, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. I remember one of my friends who, he probably didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. He was like, I heard she's tight. And I was like, it just sounds like work. Yeah. Sounds yeah. like a lot of work. Sounds painful. Might get yeah. stuck. That sentiment really hasn't changed much as I've gotten older, too. It's like, oh, it's work. Yeah, it's right. just a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> I, want some room to, I want some room to move around, stretch yeah, out, you know? Yeah. Put my yeah. feet up. Yeah. I want, <laughs> yeah. I want sex to be like I'm, a, like I'm a computer programmer, not a firefighter, you know? I want to be okay. able to do my job from a chair. I don't want okay. to I don't I have to move around. You know? I don't want to have to eat my way in. I'm Come not on. trying to. Yeah. <laughs> You know, what, I don't want to bring out tools and be in shape for this. I have to, you know, right. carry you, know, you around. You know what they say. Once you get past the smell, you got it licked. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> what dirty old Bostonian <laughs> man actually, told you actually, that? <laughs> it was a respiratory therapist that I worked with at my last job. <laughs> he was like a 65-year-old just perv. Yeah. And he had all these sayings, man. It was great. One. Well, <laughs> <laughs> on that on that smelly note, what, what beer are we drinking? <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Uh, thanks for bringing that up. I wanted to thank Superfan Clint, Clint Savoy, Savoy, our uh, Cajun our, our Cajun fan. He brought us another beer from the Bayou Tesh. Is, did I say that right, Tyler? Uh, yeah, I think you got it. Brewery think- out of Louisiana, and it's called Tart Side of the Tesh. And it's a strawberry Hefeweizen sour ale. It's got one of the coolest labels I've ever seen in a beer bottle. <sighs> God damn you, Clint! Look at that. A tart hefevi. That's pretty a sour cool. That's ale. A pretty cool oh label. Oh my god! It's got a guy getting his guts. Blown well, you know what? Clint kind of gave us shit on the uh, hmm. on the Facebook page. He's like, yeah, I got you guys some beers. I'm anxious to not hear about them, which hmm. was pretty funny. Uh, so I feel hmm. like maybe we should go back to our roots and give a quick oh, little. Uh, you're gonna like this. Give a quick little rundown and review on this. So mm-hmm. here we go. I'm just gonna down it. Um, Taste it. Don't just waste it. What do you think? It's good. Man, I love that. You it's know, not too strong at all. That's not delicious. Too tart. When it said tart sour ale, I thought you were going to hate it because you don't like those sours. It's not sour. This just has a little touch of sour yeah. to it. That's uh, It's like fresh strawberries. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like um, this one a lot, man. That's a good brewery. I remember liking the other ones. That yeah, you I do. I yeah. remember that. I like this that one, one uh, pretty good. Uh, if we're going back to the old, old 20-point scale. Okay. Uh, 
back back patented. on the twenty point scale. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give that one a thirteen point six five. Good, but I wouldn't. Uh, it's a yeah. lake beer. Okay, it's a lake beer for me. Yeah, I'm going straight fifteen on it because, you, like you said, it's a good, easy drinking summer beer. Yeah, maybe even a pool beer. Mm. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Or, and I just smoked, no, never mind, I was going to say just smoked one uh, beer. I and, want a Pilsner for And that. also, uh, podcast poundability on that is a uh, uh, six out of five. Oh, I could pound those. <laughs> yeah, my God. That, you, All right. Mm. That thing's real smooth. What'd you yeah, give it, real it smooth. Um, Yeah, I'm going to give it a 17.372. Okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah. Very Tyler-ish. Pod poundability uh, five out of five. Nice. Let's do it. Let's now, get those all afternoon. We gotta find those. I've been yeah. I've been off beer and pretty like into that low carb lifestyle lately. Right. But I just poured myself a little more because it was oh, so good. Oh, you're gonna go yeah. ahead and do it up. Yeah, yeah I am too. But uh, I'm just doing that because I'm about to uh, shoot this whiskey. Oh, I had okay. some of that whiskey too. Redemption Rye. Yeah. Also delicious. Very good. I like yeah. a good rye. I do too. I've, I've been, been getting into the ryes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So good stuff. Um. Good, good on the beer. Thanks, Clint, for the bringing that. Yeah, um, thank you, Clint. Before we leave genitalia talk, well, it's yeah. time for another walk on the, the wild, wild side with Tyler. Wow, man, yeah, <laughs> awesome. I'm never really gonna good. not like that. <laughs> it's just Nick had a it's, gay little woof sound it's, on his it's thing. It's fucking <laughs> inhuman. It doesn't even sound. Like it's that. not human. It's a cougar. Yeah, no, yeah. Anyways, or a puma, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Have you guys? Uh, are you guys aware of the uh, clitoris of the female? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> no, nope, never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Say what? The clitoris. I hear tell legends that it exists, but my I myself have never come across it. You go. <laughs> you go in through the labia, take a hard right at the skein's gland, and up past the botulinum gland, and it's going to be on your right. <laughs> You're pretty much there. Yeah. Uh, the clitor- clitoris of the female spotted hyena. Oh, <laughs> oh. all right. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, it actually rivals the, the si- rivals the size of the male's penis. What? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll show you right here. You oh. can look at this. <laughs> Wait, you showing us your penis or... Oh, no. Okay. On the right is the male's Whoa. reproductive system. On the left is the female's. That's a dick. That hyena got a big old lady dick. <laughs> yeah. It's you called know, a pseudo penis. Now, now that you yeah. mention it, I have seen a YouTube video of a hyena giving birth, and it really does look like a giant dick is shitting out a kid. Yep, that's right. It comes, yeah, the... the, the so are female hyenas like uh, through, almost hermaphrodites? No. That's why they're all laughing so much. Yeah. They're like, oh man, you guys got fucked up in evolution. No, no. They're they're not hermaphrodites. They just have this big system. They just have this big old clip that, hanging that actually, it's that like actually a... enables them. Well, so that's how it's actually how the male inseminates the female. He has to yeah. put the, his wiener into her wiener. They, they touch dock. swords. They, they dock. Do- oh, yeah. God. Man, it sounds like those uh, roided up female bodybuilders. And so here's the advantage for the female is that it's really hard to dock with a soft wiener. Hell yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all Tim, know that though, right? You know, Tim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so so uh, uh, hyenas have a matriarchal society because the females are in control of who does what oh, because wow. they control the mating. Well, don't they in our society too? <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could hold them down if yeah, you want. I mean, to. Yeah, uh, whoa, there are there are whoa. some people. That, I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend it, but we, it can. We be at done. Episodics of the Blowhole do not advocate holding down women and mating. No, with them. no, I, we're against it. I just want to clarify to all our. Rapey listeners. Well, we don't know about <laughs> all our rapey. Li- I've been waiting for someone to give me the thumbs up, and well, I heard it on a podcast. You know, I, I was kind of on the fence about it, and EOTB told me to go hold someone down. Concerned, it, I did it. I done did it. Took that big old hyena clit and made it my own. Well, I definitely didn't oh, tell uh, anyone to uh, rape a female hyena. Okay, which I invite them to try. Actually, yeah. make I sure mean, we get. get I, a, I got my phone out. For yeah, that. I get a video that of that one, please. If you find a hyena in Arkansas, I think it's your duty at that point <laughs> to, <laughs> to rape it. Like that big old lady hyena dick. I think I should offer you two <laughs> copies of Die Hard Two in exchange for this wonderful occasion to rape a hyena. <laughs> I was actually looking for two copies of Die Hard 2 today yeah. at Best Buy, and they did not have a single copy. 
Yeah. Uh, I wanted to, I, I got this great idea for a fan giveaway and it's yeah. two copies of Die Hard 2 <laughs> unopened in their packages. I feel like we should maybe include like a gift card or something along with that. Nobody's going to. For a third copy hey, of Die Hard 2. Yeah, for the <laughs> Redeemable only for. Paying it forward. That's what you got to do, man. If you get that third copy, you got to pay yeah. it forward. We have two copies of Die Hard 2 available for a giveaway. And if you share this with an extra friend, then we will include the director's cut unopened of Die Hard 2. 15 extra minutes of bonus footage Ooh. of John McClane kicking ass inside of an airport. Hell yeah. Um, did you guys see that uh, my friend who's a realtor, Elena, who listens to the podcast every now and then, she, mm-hmm. she posted a house for sale and I told her I'd offer her three copies of Die Hard 2. Naturally, she took DVD. it. She said... Mm-hmm. If you made it the original Die Hard, we'd have a deal. Stop listening to us, Elena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so we were driving around. We made 1,600 miles around Utah on our vacation last week. Wow. And um, I have a revelation for you guys. All right. Especially Mark, since you drive so much. Yeah. I, I drive quite a bit now. Well, you do drive a little bit more, yeah, especially yeah. since you're back and forth. Yeah. Um, driving gloves. Oh, it's oh, funny man. you mentioned that because they're great. I love right. what? That, oh, they're I, incredible. I, I actually had something in my buck slip I wanted to bring up about driving gloves. Driving gloves. Yep. Do it. Get them. Do you know how ridiculous? Hold on. Let me paint a, before you get into this. Sure. Let me paint a picture for everyone in the fall. Should I take? Should I take you up on this uh, suggestion? Imagine me mm-hmm. in the fall. Mm-hmm. Driving down the highway mm-hmm. in my Prius mm-hmm. that has a bra on it, mm-hmm. man's all about leather. With a <laughs> with the uh, with a libertarian sticker on oh, yeah. the back of it, yeah. In Obviously. a drug rug with turquoise rings over top of my driving gloves and yeah. a backwards Hurley hat and a thick old hemp necklace. I yeah. just have to arrest you on the spot. Yeah, you'd have to. <laughs> just I think of any I, cop. I, just, I don't know what you did, but <laughs> I know <laughs> you did something. That's exactly what a cop would I'd be passing him at the stoplight and I'd just see him do a U-turn and be like, I don't know what the fuck that guy is doing. What is he up to? <laughs> All right. Here, I, I, I get my, my uh, little example that I, I had. I do feel like an, uh, like an assassin. Yeah. My, my, my example <laughs> that I had written down perfectly illustrates your point in love for driving gloves. Today I was uh, at a stop, and I look over next to me. There is a a black man on a motor scooter, mm-hmm. and he has no helmet on. So is he it one of the good motor scooters, or is it one of the Vespas? One of the one of the sad ones. Okay, yeah. All right. So he's on a motor scooter, no helmet. No. But then I look over, and he's wearing driving gloves, and I'm like, "Why? What's with the driving gloves? You clearly, it's not about safety." Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't. I'm is not, you're afraid your your hands are going to slip off the handlebars? If you're that afraid, just put a helmet on. From a very young age, I have been confused with driving gloves, and I am not making that up just for the sake of this podcast. I'm 100 percent serious. I remember watching older movies, seeing the guy get into the uh, car that did not have a top; right. it was just the shaved top. Yeah, and he would have the glasses on and the backward cap. Totally got the glasses. Yeah. I understand yeah. that a scarf, the, dr- the driving gloves. There used Never, to, I didn't get it. There used to be a whole getup you had to wear to get like equipment you had right. to put on. I didn't Old-timey even. Cars. I also didn't yep. understand why the driving gloves always had the fucking back of them cut out. It didn't go up to the knuckles, yep. but it was just enough to oh, see it's not the back out. of your it's, hand. It's where you Velcro it over. I mean, it's just, that's just like the last part, like the opening part of your no, baseball no, no. Glove. You're no, you're not uh, understanding. I, have, what I own I'm these gloves, I, right? So I'm, no, no, you that's fine. You, have you can driving have gloves? driving gloves. I'm telling you, I just I just use them for 1,600 miles. That's what I'm telling. You. What I'm telling you, though, is that there are driving gloves. The original ones were not covering the whole back that had the strap. It was like they came down, covered the back of your knuckles. Then there was a big opening that showed the back of your bare hand yeah. and then the strap at the wrist. Yeah, because they're they're warm. So you. Oh, have so that's a, a, so that's the that's where the practical nature of these gloves comes okay, into play. Like I just every, thought of a great technological, and you could tell me if I'm wrong, but this is an <laughs> innovation on the driving glove and GPS. In my effort to embrace technology, okay, I thought okay. about this. You got the driving gloves. Yeah. Okay. The palms of them. You got your love gloves yes, with the butt plugs. The, the palms <laughs> of the right. the palms of the driving gloves 
light up if you need to turn left or right, respectively. So if I got to go left, my left hand, the uh, the top of the palm or palm there, yeah. the, it'll light up, like mm. start flashing at me, like, hey, take a left, bozo. Mm. What yeah, do you think? and also it's for visually yeah. impaired drivers. Right. right. Well, <laughs> I don't think there should be that many of those out there, but... What do you guys um, think about? Are. What do you guys think about this? A uh, we got our blinkers that go left and right. What about a blinker that that tells everybody, "Yes, I'm certainly going straight." At I'm, the stop. Yeah, because there are people that don't put their left or right blinker on. Uh, and, I have to say the, re- the same reason I don't trust people not putting their turn signals on. That's why I, I don't trust you. With, fr- I, I yeah. wouldn't trust you with the straight one right. on, dude. I'm I don't not. even trust people when they do put their turn signal on and they're coming up to the road yeah. and I need to turn out. I, I don't. don't I wait until they start to turn and then I'll do it. Yep. Here's another thing that I noticed. I want to kill <laughs> so many people on the road. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, I have constantly. I, I. It's the only time in my life where I really feel something like churn up inside of me that I'm like, what is this? Mark's going to road this, rage somebody. What is this entity inside of me? He's got a crossbow in his trunk. Me, like, I, I just, just had a crossbow thought. I just thought about a crossbow. Maybe it's because I produce death metal dicks and I hear all of the different ways that people are getting kill killed. Someone, yeah. And it, I just start cycling through it in my head like, I want to take this person in this 1999 GMC Jimmy right now and just very specific by the dry, way. <laughs> and I want to it's drop always that guy. I want to drop a brick on their head from a three story well, building. Get you some driving gloves and you will suddenly have a zen like realization that you are cooler I'll just look down at than my that. gloves. Yeah, you're like, Wow, I'm a much better driver than this guy. Look at my gloves. It indicates it. And then you can give him the finger. With my turquoise ring over much, the glove. It's much more pronounced. Yeah. And then oh, you're, you're gonna to actually go. put the ring over the glove, man. I'm not gonna not wear my turquoise rings, yeah. right? Um, I am terrified of uh, rotaries or roundabouts, whatever you want to call them, in the yeah. South because they're relatively new to the South and yeah. people don't really know how to use them yet. And I'm always afraid that if I actually expect them to yield, they're not going to yield. They're going to speed up and just sideswipe me. Yeah, fuck, man. They haven't. We haven't even gotten English right in the South. Right. Like, yeah. why, why do I, I expect just you to know how them. to navigate around a fucking circle that and almost keep happened the to me flow today. of traffic going? If you're entering the circle, you're supposed to yield to the traffic. Yeah. This guy sped up and cut me off coming in. I was like, what the fuck? That's yeah. the exact opposite of what you're supposed well, to do. Well, to be fair, in Italy, where they have traffic circles everywhere, if you can get out in front of the guy before he gets there... You earned it. Well, the point was he couldn't. I had, to, it. I had to slow down. <laughs> no, no, that's to... fine. As long as you didn't hit him as he was coming out, <laughs> he earned it. He got it. That's the way they operate, man. I'm telling you. Well, that's they crazy. pull out in front of you oh, all so the time. Oh, so Southerners actually know more about these circles. Than mm-hmm. Inherently, yeah. Okay. yeah mm-hmm. Inherently. It's embedded yeah. into their <clears throat> stupid-ass DNA. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same DNA as ours. So yeah. It's fine. Tyler, are you from here originally? Oh, yeah. Okay. Born and raised. <laughs> I was him what? spitting into a spittoon. I don't know. Actually, I was born more southern. But yeah, yeah. That's All right. Fair. We moved yeah. up here to Yankeeville. Oh, yeah. us northerners up here. <laughs> Those northerners in Arkansas. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Well, oh boy. No, I'm telling you, get some driving gloves. They're amazing. Um, they grip the wheel I, better. They, no, they don't. Oh yeah. I don't. I don't believe it. Well. I, d- I just don't. Give They're gloves. Why are you going to drive? Like, why? It's why are you going to do that? It's $18 experiment. Give it a whirl. I, that is, uh, man, that is $18. That give them to me if you don't like them. W- I'll t- I'll put a, I'm going to put a pair in every car I own. Here's the thing. Wow. How about this? In the I'll glove make box? You, I'll make you a deal. Whoa, shit. <laughs> it just dawned on me. There is a box specifically for these things in every car. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Epiphany. His face. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> this I mean, is the first moment that I'm. This is the first moment I'm truly. Holy shit! I'm truly upset that we don't live stream this podcast. I. Not only was it Tim's will face. Be. Not only was it Tim's face, but it was also the reaction that I had. Like, what the fuck is going on here right now? Whoa! He he goes, what, are you going to put him in a glove box? Oh, shit. Oh, my God. (laughs) Light bulb just went off and exploded (laughs) above my head. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. Oh, my back hurts now. (laughs) Next thing you're going to tell me is you put your suitcase in the trunk. Oh, that doesn't work. Well, it's a trunk. It's a small little mini trunk. Oh, I get it. Why else would you call it the trunk? I don't know. If you're in England, you call it the boot. So that doesn't make any sense. That's true. 
But, uh, put a lot of things in a boot. But the glove box, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, you got goddamn right it does. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. It's not the napkin box, ladies. It's a holdover from <laughs> Tyler's holdover cracking up because he knows. <laughs> you drive with a girl, they're going to ask you for a tissue or a napkin. It's, and it's either... it's Man, the, whatever. I keep those things in the glove box. It's, you it's, know, the, it's napkins from Sonic. It's the little... <laughs> It's the little plastic ware wrapped mm. in the plastic with mm-hmm. the salt and pepper mm-hmm. in it. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. And Ketchup. like about 18 pairs of sunglasses that have some shit on yeah. them. And you keep, you wouldn't be able to see out of them if you wanted to. But they're in there yeah. in case you need them. I'll you, tell you. Uh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, what do you all keep in your uh, center console? I was. Okay. This is a good segue. Yeah. I was, I was going. I was, I was actually going to ask that question. But then I kind of thought to myself. Um, you know, this is one of the great joys that I actually have in life. And I will call it a great joy. I'm not going to lie because I don't really clean my car out that often because I never get it super messy. Now, Lauren would right. disagree. There's a difference between messy and dirty. I really don't mind if my car is dirty, but I don't let it get messy. So I don't let trash pile up in there. I kind of clean it out. Yeah. However, the center center console, I never look in there and I never look in the glove box all that often. So when I do That's where gloves go. So you know, so when I do it when I do a deep clean of the car, you know, a couple times a year, it's pretty cool because I will look into my center console and I'm like, look at all this shit I have in here. I totally forgot that I had this. Fi- I found money <laughs> in my car. Oh, yeah. I found- nice. So d- just as an example, you know, cars don't have this anymore, but they used to have cigarette ashtrays, you know? Oh, yeah. And um, I had a 97 Honda Accord, uh, you know, a handful of years ago, and it broke down. I had it in the garage. Didn't know what was wrong with it. But at the time, thankfully, Lauren and I had had two other cars. And so I just started driving the other one. And so the car sat in the garage for a year or two. You know, it's just one of those things as a guy, you let things go and then you never get Jesus. around to it. Like your career aspirations. When it, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, your yeah, dreams. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Got it. <laughs> And so I finally pushed the car out of the garage. I'm like, I'm going to get rid of this thing or I'm going to fix it up, one or the other. I was real dedicated to it. Started cleaning it out. Still had shit in the center console. Found, like, pens, which pens are always a good find. I know that that's not a big thing, but when you find an old pen... Memories attached to an old pen. Maybe you know? I got. I, mean, the, I, I got time memories. I wrote yeah. that check. Exactly. You know, this was a right. good pen. It wrote well. Right. And, and uh, we can go off on this on another episode. But truthfully, when you're left-handed like I am, certain pens write better than others. Oh, so okay. fuck you if you disagree. It is just an absolute fact. And I have a theory uh, behind uh, that. I know I'm uh, going off on a tangent, but I have to address it right now, real quick. When you're right-handed, you are dragging the pen. And it writes smoother right. when you're left-handed. You're pushing you know, it, I, I'd and it say does, it's the ball more, doesn't roll sometimes. I'd say also it's more about the ink and how fast it dries. You want a fast-drying ink if you're left-handed, right? Sure, coming across yeah, it. absolutely. But writing, you're pushing the pen, and sometimes that ball right, doesn't roll. I gotcha. So anyway, I remember looking in this Honda Accord, and I opened up the ashtray. Fucking twenty dollars in there, just been sitting whoa, in there. Whoa. I was like, hell yeah! And I remember like getting paid to clean your car. Well, I remembered it was at ah. a point in time where I was just taking ones and I was shoving them in there. Like, I don't need these ones. I don't want to think about these ones. And right. I did not think about them for like two years. So and I found them later. Kirsten has this thing she does where she keeps every time she gets a five dollar bill, she puts it in a jar. If it's change, she has a so she has a change jar that's just all five dollar bills. Nice. Yeah. What, and uh which room of the house is that in? Well, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. We're having a yeah. dinner party so, at your house coming up soon, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, well we really are planning on it. So, you know, hey we got about a minute and a half here before we're gonna wrap it up. I want to tell you about my one thing that I keep in my center console oh, yeah. Sorry that about is that, man. very important. Uh, and I think everyone should keep it in their center console. Condoms? No. Just, gun. Just no. kidding. No. You don't use it. No. So it no. None of that. Flossers. Little placards. Oh, Absolutely. my God. Yeah. I need some Absolutely. of those so bad. I, I need I to use put them in the car. I use them almost daily. If you ever go out and you get a little piece yeah. of food stuck in oh, your teeth, constantly. get that thing out of there. You yeah. Know? You know, to add to my whole motif that I said earlier, driving the Prius with the gloves and all that stuff, maybe I need to add like a Klingon blade in that center console and just Ooh. drive down the road with that. <laughs> yeah. Really confuse the shit out of people. <laughs> just wave it at folks. All right. Yeah. Well, Tyler, you got anything else besides gloves that you want to keep in your car handy? 
Um, no, I will say that I actually do t- keep a box of Kleenex, actual tissue. Okay, for the so ladies. So I don't yeah. have to use the rough uh, old Sonic napkins. Gotcha. Yeah. For the ladies, I cry sometimes <laughs> when I'm driving down the road, too. Come on. <laughs> Look at that car. I'm it's very just so sensitive beautiful. Man. <laughs> I'm a very right. sensitive man. Well, guys, uh, after, th- I, after I murder <laughs> someone with road rage, I cry about it a little bit. Thank you for listening to our podcast today. Uh, if you like us, go to wherever you download us and give us a five star rating and share it with your friends. Social media shares. Tell your friends, whatever. Uh, Thanks for listening, guys. Check out Trash Blood Podcast as well. Friends from Northwest Arkansas and Death Metal Dicks. Very funny.